This is a bookball summary of the book Thou Shall Prosper by Daniel Lapin. Jewish business acumen has been a hallmark of Jewish culture throughout history and into modern times. It has often been portrayed in a negative light, but despite these goyish aspersions, Jewish people are now recognised for their ability to produce wealth as an enviable quality. In addition to answering the question, what is the reason for Jews' success in business and how can it serve as an inspiration for others? There are several books and oral histories that make up the Jewish religious canon that has contributed to Jewish business prosperity. For millennia, the Torah, Talmud and other sources have guided and inspired Jews in combination with Jewish traditions. They reveal how you, or anyone who wants to succeed in business, can find inspiration in them. Despite many misconceptions, Jews are successful in business because of education. The negative image of the Jewish businessman has persisted, and there are many false theories about why Jews have tended to have business success. One absurd theory suggests that Jews evolved in such a way that money-making is simply a part of their DNA. Jews have survived countless periods of persecution, so it's been suggested that only wealthy Jews survived these ordeals since they could buy their way out. Therefore, the future generation of Jews were born with a so-called money gene. Another nasty theory is that all Jews are cheaters. However, this enduring myth is refuted by the Torah, the holy book that defines Jewish law. It specifically calls for people to maintain an honest reputation when doing business. Any instances of cheating would be a direct offence against God. Then there's a conspiracy theory that Jews are part of some secret society. While it's true that community is an important part of Jewish life, Jews also tend to be very argumentative, so it's ridiculous to think they could keep some secret organisation together and under wraps. People also often think of Jews as possessing superior intelligence, but intelligence generally doesn't increase monetary gain since people with higher IQs tend to become academics and scientists, not business leaders. Jewish people have become successful because they've received a good education at home and in the synagogue. Jewish tradition teaches us that business is a good, morally honest and noble endeavour. When we see ourselves as morally upright, running our business in an honest and ethical fashion, we're less likely to enter the illegal or immoral territory. If someone gets away with cheating, they'll probably be tempted to cheat again. But atonement allows one to reset after committing a bad deed. Jewish tradition views lending money as a charitable act, and Jews join the banking profession to help others. This goes against the misconception that Jews became bankers to escape oppression. The communal nature of traditional Jewish life provides a helpful network of connections. Traditional Jewish workplaces are friendly and family-like, but these relationships have to be genuine. For Richard Simon, his personal relationships led to his becoming a pillar of the publishing world. Jewish businessmen can join a minyan to form new relationships. Musar, a body of ancient Jewish literature, teaches people how to better understand themselves and how others perceive them, and how to change things about themselves that might be hindering a successful relationship. Jewish tradition shows that imperfection isn't a bad thing, especially when it comes to business. It helps to look at business as an inanimate object and to blame the people who misuse it, rather than blaming capitalism. Being moral in your business practices is challenging since most actions can have good and bad effects. Andrew Carnegie and George Pullman were robber barons who improved society at a great cost to others. Jewish tradition shows us that great leaders are often followers. Jewish tradition teaches that you must provide for yourself before you can help others, and that business emulates God's creativity by being a source of growth and inventiveness. Jewish tradition shows us that great leaders are often followers, have a vision and a goal, and aren't afraid of necessary confrontation. Judah, one of Joseph's brothers, compromised and suggested they sell Joseph into slavery, which cost him his role as a leader. Leaders use the power of faith in different forms, such as daily prayer, having faith in oneself, and instilling that personal faith in others so that goals are achieved. There is no single definition of a leader, and people often become leaders under extraordinary circumstances. Rudolf Giuliani was able to guide New York City out of the crisis. Judaism shows us that change is easier to accept when it arrives gradually. Success comes to those who embrace change but keep themselves firmly rooted. Judaism teaches us to embrace change and profit from it, and the Star of David provides clues for us to follow. Change, though painful initially, is beneficial in the long run. 
Judaism shows us that change is easier to accept when it arrives gradually. Some companies fail out of business when faced with change. For example, many companies were bankrupt when steel replaced cast iron as a construction material in the 19th century. But for those that hung on, innovations were soon introduced that allowed them to switch over to the new material. They also got rid of expensive equipment and retrained or replaced employees. In the end, the change brought profits that outweighed the initial loss. Transitions are easy to accept when they happen gradually, which is why Jewish wedding ceremonies and funerals take place over several days. Stay rooted in the company's core values and mission statement, but don't close yourself off to other opportunities. Disney does this well by buying other companies to produce more adult-oriented fare. You can minimise uncertainty by making accurate predictions. To forecast the future, you must learn about the factors and trends that influence your business and keep your ego and ambitions out of the equation. This is how Winston Churchill was able to see Hitler for who he really was. People also fear the uncertainty of the future. However, you can minimise uncertainty by making accurate predictions, something that's not really that hard to do. The Talmud is explicit about how the wise are different from the prophetic. While a prophet can look into the future, the wise can look at today's events and see what consequences they'll have tomorrow. You don't have to be a genius to see what the future has in store. To make an accurate forecast, you don't need to become an expert on every business trend in the world. Foreseeing the future comes from the careful interpretation of the present and past. Investors realised that Russia was selling off its reserves to counteract inflation and keep investors buying, so the price of gold went up. Money is part of who we are, and there are benefits to giving it away. Once we accept this notion, we can have a healthier relationship with money. The old adage that time is money is certainly true. However, there's more to the equation than that. In the Talmud story of Joseph, we also learn that we are money, and that money is part of us. It's impossible to separate the two. Everything we possess, time, dignity, persistence, creative energy, can be quantified in terms of money. Money can also create a bond of trust. Ford paid $9 billion to purchase Jaguar and Volvo. Money is something that naturally moves between people, so it's better to use that money for charitable purposes. Jewish tradition holds that giving money to charity is more spiritually beneficial to the giver than to the receiver, so it's just the right thing to do. Life is a journey, not a destination, and you shouldn't stop earning money when you hit a certain age. Instead, pretend you're an Olympic athlete running the 400 meter dash and keep going even though you're slowing down. At age 65, Harlan Sanders was virtually penniless and sold fried chicken to survive. He began the empire known as Kentucky Fried Chicken. Many people are fooled by three lies they get told about retirement. Work has no real value. We become weaker and less productive in old age, and people are meant to be consumers, not creators. What's your most important key takeaway? Please comment down below and share the video if you like it. Check out these other two videos. Thank you, and until next time.